We are going to go on a journey of introducing strategies for problem solving by looking at a theorem from geometry and seeing if we can prove this theorem. The name of the theorem is the symmetric property of line segment congruence. And it states that if segment AB is congruent to DE, then DE is congruent to AB. And AB is a segment, DE is a segment. We could draw a sketch of this and convince ourselves that it's true, but it's only true for this sketch. When we do a proof of a theorem, we want it true for all cases, so any segment that we encounter should have this as true. Some of the things that we need to do is we need to understand the problem, the concepts involved, the definitions. Um, one of the th ways that we can uh, begin to get an idea is to, as I said, draw a sketch. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. The sketch that I've drawn shows segment AB and DE, and from my sketch they appear to be the same length and so would fit the definition of congruence. These on my paper are an inch in length, but again I said uh, we need to be able to prove this for any length, not just one particular length, so I don't want to, to label a measure on this. I want to prove it in a general case. So I need to uh, come up with a plan on how I want to make this proof flow. And this is kind of like writing an outline when you're in a literature class. So somehow I need to start a logical flow that begins with this statement and then ends with this statement. So this is going to be what we call my given and this will be what we call my conclusion. To run through the proof and the logic, I'm going to use what is known as the two-column proof. So this column over here will be my mathematical statements, and this column over here will be the logical reasoning that I use. So my plan is to start with this given and with this conclusion, and I have to fill in the details in between. Looking at this diagram over here, we have something that says congruence. And so we need to understand something about the definition of congruence. So this is something that you are going to have to know or you're going to have to look up. And it ends up that that is going to be a key to running through the logical thought here is knowing what the definition of congruence is. The definition of congruence tells us that things are equal in measure but can occupy different places in space, which is exactly what I've got in my diagram here. So that's going to be my next step. I'm going to state that AB is equal to DE, and that's by the definition of congruence. The next thing that I want to observe is that this really isn't order specific. I've drawn this diagram here. If I look at AB and DE, I have that AB is the same length as DE, or I could look at DE being the same length as AB, not really order specific. Uh, if I would redraw this, I could draw AB below DE, if you want to think about reading top to bottom. Um, but really, I didn't even have to draw these on top of each other. I could have drawn them side by side. I could have drawn them at a diagonal. And so just thinking about the diagram and the logic as a part of what we're thinking about and understanding this problem, we find that order is really not important. So how can we establish that order is not important here? Well, part of the key of that is this equality. If we think about an idea about uh, the number 5 being equal to 2 plus 3, 
Well, we could have rewritten that as 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So that's the idea. So off to the side, maybe I should make a note of this, that that's kind of uh, from our knowledge that we're bringing into this is that we understand that 5 is equal to 2 plus 3 or that 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 and we're able to flip back and forth in this way and so we understand these number concepts and we want to bring it into this geometric concept so this is some of our pre-established knowledge this system and this idea are going to be uh, the same idea that we want to bring in here and it has to do with the symmetric property of equality all right at this point this statement here and this statement here are very similar the difference is that this symbol here means equality and this symbol here means congruence and so how can I move from having this equal sign here to having congruence if I can make that bridge in my thinking then I would have the statement which we've already said in our plan should be our conclusion well how do I do that well if we look up here we see we were able to go from this congruence symbol to this equal symbol by the definition of congruence. And so that's exactly the same kind of idea that we're going to use to go back. If these things are equal, and these are geometric objects, then they are also congruent. They are equal in length and occupying different places in space. And so we're going to call this again definition of congruence and we'll switch from an equal sign to a congruent sign. All right, at this point, we have followed our plan. We have started with this as a given. We've ended with this as a conclusion. We have this at the beginning. This is our given. We've moved through some mathematical steps here with some logic to back that up, and we've ended with this statement that we've said should be our conclusion. At this point, we can end our proof. We've established through a logical chain that we have that this and this happens. If we have this, then we know this is true. And we have proven this theorem, which is the symmetric property of line segment congruence. So traditionally at the end, you um, put some kind of mark and you mark it as QED, which is a, um, an abbreviation for a Latin phrase, quad erit demonstrandum. Once we end our proof, we consider this to be a problem that is solved. So let's uh, go back and take a look at some of the strategies we used. So we're looking at solving a problem. We need to work through understanding the problem, the definitions involved, some of the concepts involved. We need to devise a plan, uh, understand what we want to show, and then we have to follow through with that plan. Uh, one of the characteristics that we had here is a strategy we used was drawing a diagram to help us understand what we wanted. We kind of outlined an idea, uh, not in a very specific way, but in a general way. We knew that this was going to be the given, this was going to be the conclusion, and so we worked through and we brought together logical ideas. So this is some of the introduction to problem-solving strategies. And so um, other techniques that you might use would be what a lot of students like to go to first, and that's we guess something and then we test it. This can take a long time and it's kind of a brute force type of thing, but it can be effective in, in certain times and places, especially if you're working on something that's multiple choice in which you have possible solutions to test. Um, in a more algebraic sense, you sometimes assign your unknowns to have some kind of variable and it could be your initials or your favorite letter or just something in general as an X or an N. Um, and these are all part of problem solving techniques. Uh, fundamentally, what we need to understand though is that there are many ways to find answers. And so there's not necessarily one set path. What works for you may not be the go-to for somebody else. And so we need to practice doing problems so that we can become better at it and more adept at it. And it will become more natural as we build the, that kind of mental uh, processing and memory for these types of things. It's just like practicing a sport. You build muscle memory. 
Cheerful Calculating.